Hi everyone, my name is Sam Neeth. Have you ever thought why some kind of fish can survive in a salt water and others can't? Or why is it bad for people to drink too much of salt water? The answers have to do with this osmosis. Osmosis is a process in which water or other solvent molecules move naturally from diluted solution into a more concentrated solution. In this activity, we will learn more about osmosis as we discover how to bend carrots. In this experiment, we will study about the process of osmosis. It describes the spread of water molecules or other solvent molecules through a region from a higher concentration to a lower concentration until the water concentration is even spread throughout the space. First of all, label one bag as a salt and other bag as a no salt. In the label bag salt, add one teaspoon of salt in it. Add two carrots in each bag. Also, make sure the bag is fully sealed. In the bag labeled salt, make sure the salt is spread throughout the bag. Now wait for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we will see that in a bag labeled salt, Water has came out from the carrots. Also, these carrots are flexible. Salt contains a higher concentration of sodium ions than carrots. So the water moves out from the carrots. Whereas on the other hand, the carrots in the bag label no salt, the carrots will not bend at all. Next, let's test hypertonic and hypotonic solution. Label one cup water. Next, label a second cup as a half teaspoon salt. A third cup as a one teaspoon salt. And finally, label a fourth cup two teaspoon salt. Add water to each cup. The amount of water doesn't matter in this case, but make sure the amount of water in each cup must be the same. Then add the appropriate salts in each cup. Then stir the solutions in each cup. As I mentioned earlier, add two carrots in each cup. Now leave the samples overnight. Here are some samples that were soaked overnight. After 24 hours, what happened to the carrot in the first cup, which only contained water and no salt? From just looking at the carrot, I can see that it's bigger. But I can learn more about what happened by feeling the carrot. When I take the carrot out of the water, I can feel that it's stiffer. Now, let's compare this carrot to the carrots in the other cup, which has contained water and salt. When I try to bend the carrot in the second cup, which had one half teaspoon of salt, I noticed nothing has changed here. The size of the carrot has remained the same. Now I'll compare this carrot to the carrots in the third cup, which had one teaspoon of salt. The carrot from third cup is squishy and has shrunk. Finally, let's look at the carrot from the 4th cup, which had 2 teaspoons of salt. This carrot is even more squishy and more shrunken than the one in the 3rd cup. Based on these findings, what can we learn about the salt water solutions in each cup? The pure water solution was hypotonic compared to the carrot, since it didn't have any salt. Because of this, water moved into the carrot. The solution in all other cups all contained salt. So without knowing the salt concentration in the carrot, we don't know whether they are hypotonic or hypertonic compared to the carrot. But by examining what happened to the carrot, we can still find it out. Since the carrot in the second cup didn't change, the solution must have been isotonic 
meaning the solution inside and outside the carrot have the same concentration of solutes. Next, in the third and fourth cup, the carrots are squishy and shrunken. This means that the carrots lost mass. Hence, both solutions must have been hypertonic solutions. Similarly, we can perform same experiment by using eggs instead of carrots. Will you get same results? Yes. When the cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, meaning a solution with a low concentration of solutes, the water will enter the cell and the cell will gain more mass. On the other hand, when a cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, meaning a solution with the more concentrations of solutes, the water will leave the cell and the cell will lose more mass.